One thing to remember when setting up a sleeping bag is never pitch it on a slope. Oh crap! Whoa! Whoa. Just got back from a car camping trip. This is kind of the area that I'm in. Up here in the pine trees and some other trees. Pretty gorgeous, great day in the 70s, 80s. Just gorgeous out here. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys a look at where I'm at. Um, got a question recently about my sleeping system for hiking, backpacking, um, camping things like that so I thought I would kind of give you guys a little bit of an insight into it um, now keep in mind this is based on tent camping right here um, in the future it looks like I'm going to kind of navigate towards hammock camping let me adjust the camera here a little bit but um, before I do that I kind of just wanted to get this video out there for those that were asking about it and just kind of to give everyone my opinion on it just keep in mind some of this stuff is going to change in the future just based on the style of camping that I'm doing now but uh, with that said let's go ahead and take a look um, I'm going to show you guys what I used on this this uh, kind of tent car camping trip and when you're doing a, a car camping trip you can afford a little bit more weight so I kind of packed along as far as sleeping pads whoops this is the Alps Mountaineering Comfort Series air pad this is the long one because I'm pretty tall. This is a great, great item if you're a side sleeper or a stomach sleeper. It's um, a self-inflating pad. It's not as expensive as those Thermares ones that you get. This one, I think when I got it was around, somewhere around 60 bucks, I want to say, or around 50. I think I got it on sale, but just a great, great comfortable mat sleeping pad. And what I'll usually put under that is this Thermares Ridge Rest. That gives me just some amazing comfort, even on a hard ground. Um, it's just really comfortable to sleep on my side or my stomach with that. Now, with that said, um, I typically won't take this on a backpacking trip. It's just way too heavy. And um, even though it's extremely comfortable, the size and the weight is just, it's just too much for, for backpacking. So typically I won't take this. Um, if I was going to backpack as far as a sleeping pad, I'll usually take just a regular closed cell foam that you get at Walmart. You know, just the eggshell carton design pattern. Um, and I'll put that directly on the ground and then I'll put this like Thermarest Ridge Rest on top of that. And then my sleeping bag on top of that. So that gives me some pretty good comfort. I mean, for backpacking, you know, you can't expect extreme comfort. You got to kind of give or take a few things. So. But with this setup, I can definitely get a good night's sleep and be warm and comfortable in cold weather. This will insulate you from the ground and it'll kind of reflect your body heat and it'll trap it beneath the sleeping bag so that you can stay warm off the ground. Now speaking of sleeping bags, this is kind of, I have a one halfway decent bag. This is the Marmot Trestles 20 bag. It's a 20 degree bag, synthetic filled, um, not down. But uh, it's a pretty good value for what it is. This is a semi-rectangle, so it's not a complete money, mummy design. The foot box is still pretty wide and roomy. It has kind of a mummy design through the shoulders and uh, a top hood. I think this, this model has been superseded by the Trestles 15 from Marmot. But um, when I bought this, it was going out on clearance, and I think I got it for about $45, $50. Bucks. So it was a really great deal on it. Um, for backpacking, this bag is kind of heavy. It's about four and a half pounds with its included um, compression sack, which is pretty heavy for a bag. But for a synthetic bag, you know, I'm a pretty tall guy, so I, I prefer a roomier bag. This is just the regular length, but it's actually a little bit larger than your typical mummy design bag. So, you know, I can kind of uh, afford to take that extra weight. Um, you can go more expensive and buy maybe a smaller bag where you can't move around as much in. I prefer to just take that extra pound or so if you're taking a, a synthetic bag. But as far as the, the rating on this, 20 degrees, I find that to be a little bit overestimated. I don't think I would take just this bag down to 20 degrees. 
Um, I've taken a lot of trips with this, probably about 10, and the coldest I've ever been in it was probably into the like mid 30s, and this alone wouldn't keep me warm. But uh, what I typically will do is I'll take a just a, a regular old polyester sheet. It's not even a, a, a sleeping bag liner. And you can go ahead and line either the interior or the exterior of your bag. And this will add, I'd say, like 10 degrees of warmth. This is about a pound. Um, you, can, you can make these even lighter. This is actually a queen size sheet because I like to kind of bundle up with it. Um, but you can find a twin size or a full size if you want to go a bit lighter and even some lighter material. But th this is a perfect solution if you don't want to go out and buy an actual sleeping bag liner. Just use a regular polyester type sheet and um, it'll work just great. Now a little bit about that. Some people will put sleeping bag liners on the interior to keep your bag clean um, and, and it's easier to clean and maintain when you get home. But um, you know, there, there's a few different opinions on this. What I typically will do is I'll put this on the exterior of the bag as opposed to the interior, just because this isn't really as comfortable of a material as what's in the sleeping bag. And this isn't really designed to um, maximize your body heat inside of the bag. The material inside of your bag is more designed to do that. I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but you can kind of see that it has a, a design to where it reflects your body heat, whereas this doesn't. And on the interior, this is kind of the material that they use and the same pattern. So that's kind of what I do is I'll, I'll put this on the exterior of the bag and that'll give me a little extra warmth if I'm planning on doing any winter camping or winter backpacking. And again, this is small, it's lightweight, you know, relatively, it's about a pound. But uh, yeah, so for car camping, you know, you can afford a little more comfort. I'll use the, like I said, the, the air pad, the Alps Mountaineering Comfort Series air pad along with the ridge rest but if i want to go lighter and backpacking then i'll just use a some regular closed cell foam with um with the ridge rest now as far as a sleeping bag um i'd like to upgrade to down possibly in the future you know a lot of the hiking and camping i do isn't in cold weather i mean today it's like it's 85 degrees out here 80 85 so it's pretty warm you can kind of get an idea for the climate i'm in but uh you know, the, dif the difference between down and synthetic is that synthetic, for one, is extremely um, cheaper and, in my opinion, maybe a little bit more durable, but it adds bulk. You know, it adds weight. Uh, the same size synthetic bag is going to probably be a pound to a pound and a half lighter than this bag right here. Um, excuse me, um, the same size down bag. But synthetic bag, you know, is more than half the price or less than half the price. I mean, like I said, this bag was about $50 on sale. If I was to buy a synthetic bag of this size, I'm looking at two to three hundred dollars. So, and another downside is that when you're in the rain, um, if you get that synthetic bag damp or a little bit, um, you know, if you get it wet in the rain in the rain in your pack, then it's not going to insulate you as much. It's not going to be able to have its same warmth properties when it's damp or moist. On the other hand, a synthetic bag is going to give you at least a little bit of warmth, more so than down you know even if it's damp or wet you're still going to insulate you from the cold a little bit so you know that's kind of my thoughts and opinion on on sleeping systems and uh you know i definitely know this is not an ultra light kit it's not an ultra light sleeping system but it's what i have and what i could afford and um it's definitely worked really well for me in some different conditions so um you know if you're out in the summer you might want to just lay on top of your bag and use the sheet kind of as a cover but you know, if you're in the winter and the 20 degree bag isn't good enough for you, you're getting a little chilled, you can bring along a sheet or a sleeping bag liner and just add some extra insulation to your sleeping system. So anyways, I appreciate you guys for watching. Hope this was a little bit informative and helpful. Um, anyone looking at um, a relatively inexpensive sleeping bag and they like the Marmot brand, excuse me, you might wanna check out the Trestles 20. I mean, I've used this one probably on 10 trips and you know the stitching's held up pretty well there's a few spots where it's coming undone but that's kind of to be expected i could easily send this in and they would probably either fix it or replace it but just haven't had the need to do so so anyways thanks for watching appreciate it everyone hope everyone's doing well and i'll see you next time peace